Hey there, roguelike fans. Um, we're back with another roguelike. Uh, this one called Forays into Narendran. Um, this is not a part of any given 7-day roguelike challenge. We're momentarily deviating from the 2011 7-day roguelike challenge, which we've almost finished exploring, to be honest. But uh, the remaining few games there I have to play on my old computer, and that uh, that just is tiring and, and difficult. So I'm playing on my new computer, new being several years old, actually. Um, this game... For reason to Narendran. Um, a million years ago, when I got my Xbox, uh, year 2000, I guess, so 21 years ago, more slightly more accurately, um, I can remember you know firing up Halo, firing up um, Project Gotham Racing, two of the first games I got, and being just blown away. They were at the time more powerful. The, the Xbox was the, at the time more powerful than my contemporary computer, and I loved both of those games. And I remember having a sense that anything I get on the Xbox will be amazing. It's, it feels like a gateway to another world. The reason I bring this up is about five or six years ago was the first time I started exploring roguelikes. Despite the fact that I've been working on my own roguelike for decades by that point, I had deliberately, well, initially out of uh, ignorance, not explored any other roguelikes. And then after I learned of their existence, I had deliberately avoided them so as not to... Um, muddy the waters of my own game with, you know, stealing ideas. I've, I've abandoned that, clearly. I steal ideas all the time now and stick them in caverns. Why wouldn't I? Um, but back then, when I first started exploring the roguelike scene, I had that same feeling. Every game I stumbled across was a brand new world, and it filled me with just a sense of wonder and the sense that everything was going to be exciting. And at that time, Forays into Narendran had just released. And to me, it felt like, oh my god, not only is this a... Uh, a scene that's exciting to explore, it's a scene that's ever-evolving, which is 100% accurate. At that time, I fired up Forays, I played it a bit, enjoyed it, but there was so much else to explore that I never really returned to it until now. We're playing version 0 0.8.4. Um, that is the most current version that exists. This is a game by Derek S. Creamer. Let's press a button. Or click with our mouse. There you go. Look at this, mouse support. Mouse support, guys. You never see that in roguelikes. Um, we can start a new game. We can press how to play. I, I, I'm not going to do that now, except for to do this really quickly to show you how, how well done this is. The nice, uh, nice little menus. There's all kinds of stuff here to learn about it. We're not even going to look at tips. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, let's press escape. I don't know if quit will quit the game or if quit will quit the help. Let's just click it and find out. Just quit, quit the help. Good. Um, we're going to start a new game, and then I'll tell you more about this. It is turn-based, so we have time to, uh, to dick around. Let's be Jeff, as we always are, with our first character at the very, very least. One second. Interesting options I'm seeing right here, too. You can do static, use this name for every character. Oh, I didn't mean to press 2. Um, name all future characters after after this one. That's just, that's just kind of interesting. Name all future characters randomly. But we'll keep Jeff for now. How, how cool is that, eh? That's awesome. Enter. Here we go, moving around. It does give you um, sort of tutorial uh, steps as you go as well. Let me unplug my gamepad, which was plugged in to test Stop the Saturnians. Let me plug in my number pad, which is wireless and therefore needs to be plugged in. Okay, done and done. Use the number pad, one to move, nine to move, press five to wait. If you have no numpad, you can use the VI keys. This tip won't appear again. If you wish to review all tips, you can find them by pressing question mark. Press any key to continue. All right, here we are. Now, oh, look at this. Um, in the mountain pass, where travelers vanish, a stone staircase leads downward. Welcome, Jeff. This is a slight typo, it looks like. The, the, t -the, the stones here have been worn smooth by time. It's like the initials, the initial statement. I can have a typo in the initial statement. Um, before we do dive in, let me tell you what little I know about, um, about this game from online. Um, well, and what I don't know from already playing it, you know, several years ago. Um, the one main thing I want to highlight here, uh, though your reason for traveling through Narendra's Deep is unknown, you aren't a clueless wanderer, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we don't know why we're here. <laughs> we're trying to get to the bottom of the, the dungeon, but we don't know what... We don't, have a, we don't have a defined quest as of yet. But it specifically says, you don't know who you're dealing with. I think there's going to be a big bad at the bottom that we're here to kill. And every time you play, it'll be a different big bad, is my guess, um, based on what I'm seeing here. Let's begin exploring the game. Let me call back up my studio so I can play in a big window, like this. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to call your attention to is 
well help sure help give me a little help um, overview let's go to overview here let's just page down on here we can switch our, there's a bunch of keyboard bindings right here um, so I guess we will look at this much sorry guys let's look at this even though I've already looked at it let's look at it together um, E to examine and change your equipment and A to use your consumable items. So E for examine, A for activate. Let's remember it that way. If your health drops, press R to rest, but only once per level. Um, that reminds me of uh, Warlock of Firetop Mountain where there'd be occasionally these fountains you could drink at to heal, but you could only use them once and it'll only be on designated levels. Except for here you can do it anywhere, once per level. Your torch eliminates your surroundings, but also gives away your position. If you want to avoid notice, put it away with T. T toggles it. T for toggle torch. Press tab to look at your surroundings. Pressing escape or space will exit most menus and selections. If you've learned to spell, you can cast it with Z for zap. You can view and activate feats from the character screen by pressing C. Some feats are activated while some are entirely passive. Try switching to your bow and firing some arrows. E to switch, S to shoot. And here's what I want to highlight. You always have access to five different weapons and three different armors. Uh, you don't have to kill every enemy you encounter. Some, mostly humanoids, can carry consumable items, so it might be worth them killing them, but you don't get experience for killing in this game. You only level up by finding shrines and praying at them to level yourself up. Uh, the rest of it we don't need to know right now. Let's try E for equipment. You can see we have five different weapons. You'll always have five different weapons. There's a sword, there's a mace, there's a dagger, and a staff, and a bow. They all serve different purposes. The sword. A basic weapon, the sword delivers powerful critical hits that remove half of a foe's maximum health. Uh, you can't cycle downwards here. you actually got to press the letter B. Uh, maybe you can do it with this thing. No, you can't do it with a mouse. Oh, yeah, you can. There you go. B. Um, the mace. The mace won't be stopped by armor. Critical hits will knock the foe back three steps. Dagger. In darkness, the dagger always hits and is twice as likely to score a critical hit, stunning the foe. Staff. Staff always hits against a foe that just moved, in addition to swapping places. Critical hits will trip the foe. And bow, a ranged weapon less accurate than melee. Critical hits will immobilize the target briefly. We also have three armors. Leather. Plus two defense. It's light and quiet, but provides only basic protection against attacks. Chainmail. Plus six defense, minus one stealth. Chainmail provides good protection, but hampers stealth slightly. And full plate. Plus 10 defense, minus 3 stealth. Plate is noisy, shiny, and tiring, providing great defense at the cost of stealth. We have no magic trinket. Let's get out of here. Well, no, let's, let's keep the leather. Let's equip, um... I guess I'll stick with the sword for now. Okay. So. Um... Yeah, you're going to want to toggle those weapons around, or switch them around, as you go, if you learn of you know, monsters coming up and that sort of thing. Let's press tab to find out what this thing is. Pile of rubble. Closed door. These are just walls you can't see, yeah. Okay. Escape. Surprise t t uh, or tab doesn't toggle that. Alright, we've opened the door, and here we get a little tutorial again. Attacking enemies. To make a melee attack, simply try to move into an adjacent monster. Press any key to continue. Okay. Um, there's the monster there. Let's switch our weapon to a staff. Because that monster's going to come towards us. Let's also switch to full plate. Hit enter. What do we care about stealth? It's seen us, I think. Oh, it ran away. Maybe it hasn't. <laughs> okay, let's put our uh, leather back on. And our sword back on. What's that? Fire pits are stone circles containing glowing embers. They're safe to walk over, but if anything flammable is dropped or knocked in, it will catch fire. This includes scrolls, oil, and you. <laughs> um, so maybe knocking an opponent into that would help uh, do that? I don't know. Click. Uh-oh. There are traps here. Traps. These dangerous mechanisms are triggered when something steps or lands on them. They have a variety of effects. You'll be able to identify the type of trap if you examine it in the light. Once the trap has been triggered, it won't trigger again. You can fling items onto traps to set them off from a safe distance. All right. What happened? Do we know? If, uh, if anything happened, maybe it was just to teach us about it. I don't know. I didn't notice anything happening. This phantom tiger has been alerted. We don't need to change our weapon because, well, yeah, yeah let's do it. Or let's change our, uh, let's change a full plate mail. And let's change to our staff. 
so we'll automatically hit it when it approaches us. Attack, we automatically hit it. We only need to do one damage. It's dead. Although we took uh, damage, either from that trap and it hadn't yet updated, or or as a result of the trap, it's, or as a result of combat somehow. I'm not sure how. Let's equip our sword. Let's equip, whoops, our sword and our leather armor. It does take a turn to switch, as far as I know. What is this stuff? Shrines will provide a permanent boost to one of your five skills. Combat, defense, magic, spirit, or stealth when you activate them by pressing G. Some shrines appear in pairs. When you activate one, the other will also be depleted. Let's take a... Is that what we're looking at there? Those are those things? A standing torch? Okay. A shrine of stealth or a shrine of combat? We can probably only activate one. Um, just so you know what this stuff does. Let's take a look at our help again. Sorry I'm slurring my speech this morning. I am just doing so. I noted it when I was playing um, State of Decay 2. I noted it as well. I apologize if I am in any way difficult to comprehend. Let's look at our skills. So combat. Um, every level of combat gives you plus one damage and plus one percent to hit with all weapons. Every level of defense gives you plus three percent chance to avoid attacks. Magic grants you another spell and increases your mana by five. Spirit measures your willpower and ability to tap in your emotions. Um, each level increases your chance to ignore certain status effects by 8%, so it's like a saving throw. And stealth, each level increases your chance to remain unseen by enemies. I think we're going to go for the combat one, because I like fighting shit. Let's go here. The Shrine of Combat glows faintly. Press G to touch it. G. Oh, it tells us right here. There you go. Okay. Very simple to comprehend that. You feel a rush of power. All right, we get some sort of feat as well. Feats are special abilities you can learn at shrines. For each set of five shrines, one of them will grant you a feat when you activate it. Therefore, you'll learn one new feat per two dungeon levels. So that means to me what? There are three, two or three shrines on every level? Is that what that means? The feat starts working immediately upon choosing it. Press any key to continue. Are we allowed to choose one now? It looks like it. Quick draw. So we could choose this. Switch from a melee weapon to another weapon instantly. So if you switch weapons, um, we instantly um, can attack. That's kind of neat. Whirlwind style, when you take a step, you automatically attack every enemy still adjacent to you. Those are passive abilities. I, I tend to like to focus on passive abilities when playing any new game. Just because, um, well, uh, because... It requires less effort on my part to know when when to when or how to use it. I can just play the game naturally, and they're automatically there, right? But let's look look and see what other options we have. Lunge, leap from one space away, and attack your target with perfect accuracy. So automatically hitting, if you're attacking from one space away, if you use the lunge ability. Drive back. Enemies must yield ground in order to avoid your attacks, and cornered enemies are more vulnerable to critical hits. When your target has nowhere to run, your attacks won't miss. That's interesting. Can we scroll down here? Um, or are we only allowed to choose these because we because we increased combat? Probably you can only choose a combat feat, is my guess. Out of these, I think I'm going to take lunge. I think I'm going to go in the fly in the face of what I just said and take lunge. There you go. We'll have to figure out how to use it. You've learned an active feat that you can activate at any time. Excellent, excellent, excellent tutorial system here. Um, I, I took the time to read through most of the rules before I started playing, but it turns out I didn't need to. This is teaching me everything I need to know. This is great. I should steal this shit for caverns. To use an active feat, uh, open the character screen with C. And then press the key shown next to that feat. So let's learn what we could use. It would be um, A. So if we press A, we will activate lunge, apparently. Although I thought A was activated on uh, an inventory item, but who knows. We have a defense of plus two. Why? Oh, because of our, our leather armor, of course. Okay. Apparently we have a base 76% chance to hit, and we do 2d6 plus one damage now. Um, very simple system. It's, a, it's a, definitely a streamlined roguelike. Again, providing you all your weapons and armor up front, allowing you to switch at will, is a, is a very different system from anything you're going to see elsewhere. And kind of strange when you think about you know, what it symbolizes. Look at that. There's a trap right there. You see a fling trap. Do I know what that does? No. But uh, but cool. Definitely different than most games, and interesting. What is that? Oh, it's alerted. All right, so we should definitely switch again to my plate mail. I think once it's alerted, there's no point in trying to be stealthy, right?
let's stick with a sword. Let's try and get it to a point where hopefully it comes. It being alerted hasn't resulted in it attacking. A lone wolf. Just because it's alerted doesn't mean it attacks. A darkness dweller which is unaware of us. I don't want to fight two things at once. Let's keep our plate mail and sword going for now. Exhaustion. Oh, okay, I didn't notice that meter beneath our health there. Look at that. Many actions and the occasional hazard or enemy can increase your exhaustion. If your exhaustion gets high enough, it'll, it, it will interfere with your ability to wear armor properly, cast spells, and use weapons. You can remove all exhaustion by resting. I don't want to do that right now. Plate armor provides excellent protection, but its weight um, adds to your exhaustion each time it blocks an attack. But it didn't say anything about when you move. I guess we're just attacking this thing. Critical hits. Some attacks are nastier than others. Each attack has a 1 in 8 chance of being a critical hit. This is great information. I love this. A critical hit might deal more damage or inflict a status condition. Different monsters in each of your weapons have different critical effects, so be prepared. You hit the lone wolf. The lone wolf bites me. It trips me. Fuck you, lone wolf. You miss it. My armor blocks it. It's almost dead, man. Alright, it's dead. Let's switch off of our uh, plate. Back to leather for now. So try and get our, exa our, our exhaustion back. I don't want to rest. Aren't we only allowed to rest once per level to get our health back? I think I slightly... Can I, can I cross this? Oh, you, uh, when you bump into leather or rubble, it can scatter it. You scatter, let's scatter all of it. Just to see what happens. So your exhaustion is coming back on its own. Oddly, scattering rubble counted as kind of like... Can I just pass my turn? To, no. Passing your turn does not regain you exhaustion. Or, or, or does not help fill your exhaustion meter, or your lack of exhaustion meter, I guess. Um, but scattering rubble does. I don't know if that's a glitch in the game, or if that's uh, intended to be that way. I don't know. I'm putting on my fucking plate mail again, guys. And attacking the lone wolf. It tripped me, but did I not kill it? No, I guess not yet. Alright, it's dead. The Dweller is aware of us, so let's let it come to us. Several of them coming, damn it. Or not. Are they in darkness? Is that what I'm seeing there? Is that what the light... What is this light blue thing is in? Oh, glowing fungus, okay. Oh, we can learn about it, too. The pale, This pale, dirty humanoid wears tattered rags. Its huge eyes are sensitive to light. I love it! This is excellent, guys. It's blinded. Sounds like our, uh, our torch hurts it. I strike from hiding. If I'd have known that, I'd have... Uh, I guess because it's blinded. We need to switch to our dagger. Which will automatically... Let's just do it. Let's switch to our dagger. Killed that guy. It's no longer blinded, mind you. I don't want to take a turn to switch weapons. I was finishing off with that. We found a kaleidoscopic orb. Let's get that with G, maybe? You pick up the kaleidoscopic orb. This is an unidentified item. It's probably useful, but you won't know exactly what it does until you try it. A scroll of knowledge will also identify your items. You can press backslash to see the list of item types. This can help you figure out what an unknown item could be. Um, what it doesn't tell us here, just so I, 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 don't, I don't know, um, is do I not know about a kaleidoscopic orb partly because I've never played the game before, and if I'd already played it, I would know what it always does, i.e. does it have a permanent... Does a kaleidoscopic orb always have a permanent effect? Or is a kaleidoscopic orb like a potion or a scroll in other games where the effects are randomized? I'm suspecting the latter based on what it just told me there, but I don't know. Let's switch back to our sword. And let's pass through patches of luminescent fungus emit a spectral glow. I love the descriptions. I like everything about this game so far. I, I, do, I do find the switching of weapons and armor very weird. It's a, it's a tactical layer, which is cool. Um, and different from anything else I've seen, so that's kind of welcome. But from, a, from a, um, a logical standpoint, 
why is it more exhausting to wear plate mail armor than to carry a suit of plate mail armor and a suit of chain mail armor on your back while you're wearing leather armor, you know? But I'm not going to argue. Stick to the places where, where it's lit by fungus for now. Oh, there's something to pick up. It might be Clyde's. Look, it's changing colors. That's kind of neat. Oh, it's an iridescent orb. Let's get that. I'm not going to test these things yet. A giant bat, which has now been alerted. Let's switch to our bow. Apparently we're still wearing full plate. I didn't mean to be doing that. Can we fire at it? How do we, how do we fire at it? Um, fling an item? F? No. Uh, let's look at our help menu here. Overview. Oh, that's right. We can switch to our bow with E. Um... S to shoot, so not F to fire, S to shoot, S. Let's see if we have a line of sight to it, let's just select that. Do I press 5 on my keypad to say yes, no, enter? Enter worked. Let's keep shooting at it with our bow. Let's back up. Uh, shoot one more time. We hit it. Let's switch to our sword. You put away your bow and ready your sword, the giant bat bites you. Fuck you, giant bat. Oh, it's, it's getting away, damn it. Oh, it scratched me. Let's use our lunge. A. Hmm. It said press A. Maybe maybe press C, then A? Sorry, that's probably it. C, then A. And that's the one we want, so let's hit enter. We lunged at it. Boom! Got it. Oh, I like that. That's that's cool. That was a cool active... What's this? What's one of these fives? What's going on with all these fives, guys? Are they, like, serpent statues or something? Let's press tab and find out. It's a statue, all right. What kind of statue? I don't know. Let's escape from the search. I'm, I'm really liking this game. This is quite cool. Giant bat again. Let's back off and see if we can get it to come towards us. Okay, good. Let's use our lunge again. C, A, enter. Oh, we hit it. And then we killed it. Let's switch off of our, uh, switch to leather. Hit enter. Let's go clear some rubble to apparently get exhaustion back. Look at that. Kind of weird, eh? I was mainly doing it before to, uh, see if it, you know, maybe you can find something under it the way you can, say, an Ang Band or, or Moria. Haven't found anything under it yet, but it still works. Hey, look at that. Some more, some more shrines for us. And a goblin. Let's switch to our bow. And let's fire with S. Just shoot. Shoot. Enter. Shoot. Enter. Shoot. Enter. Shoot. Enter. Kill it with a bow. Fun times. Let's get the bow out for now. So we have a choice of a shrine of magic or a shrine of spirit. Let's take a look at our uh, character, our, our, our help menu again to, to learn more about what those would do. B. So spirit would give us better defense against certain status effects, and magic would give us a spell and increases our mana by five. Maybe we will try that because I want to see what spells are like. The shrine of magic grows, glows faintly. Press G to touch it. G. Each time you increase your magic skill, your mana and mana capacity increases by five, and you learn a new spell. You feel a rush of power. Spell tiers. Spells are divided into five tiers based on their power and difficulty. The most basic are Tier 1, while Tier 5 contains the most powerful. Spell Tier affects two things, mana cost and failure chance while exhausted. I'm often exhausted. Maybe I should have stuck with the other one. Each spell costs an amount of mana equal to its tier. Higher tiers are more difficult, so they're the first to be affected by exhaustion. I, I really like this. <laughs> I just fucking like it. Force Palm. Can we, see what, can we see what these do? Oh, I see. Across the way, you can see... Um, what they do. Force Bomb deals 1d6 damage, knocks target back. Grease creates a pool of oil on the floor. Interesting. Magic Hammer range of 1, but it deals 4d6 and stuns. Woo! Passage, which travel to the other side of a wall. Okay, that's kind of cool. Or Doom, 4d6 damage inflicts vulnerability. I might, might go with Magic Hammer. Let's try Magic Hammer. Let's learn Magic Hammer. Your magic skill increases to one. You learn magic hammer. Let's switch back to our um, leather. We're already in leather. 
So we'll know how to, um, that's a fire pit, right? We'll know, you just bump into a door, by the way, to open it. Nothing, that's it. I think we're ready to go down to the next level. Before we go, let's press R for rest. The dungeon is utterly silent for a moment. Can we learn any more feats? Or is learning the spell that? Maybe not. I don't know. Let's go right beside it and let's press R. If I had to guess, I'm going to say we're going to get all of our health back and all of our exhaustion. I don't know what repair equipment does. I was right. You rest. You feel great! I do feel great, guys. It's good to be me. You walk down the stairs. Probably get all your mana back, too. More. Alright, here we are. Let's hope our exhaustion does not start creeping up as we walk around in leather armor here. Uh-oh. A blood moth, which has been alerted, and a goblin shaman, which has been alerted. Let's back off. Let's switch to the sword. See if they show up around that corner, in which case we'll just lunge at them. Can I lunge at that? Is that possible? C. A. Yep. Let's lunge at it. Oof. Got it. You lunge. You hit the goblin shaman. The goblin shaman casts force palm. Fuck you! This one to six damage. The goblin shaman strikes you. You are knocked into the wall. There, we killed it. Without resorting to plate mail. Let's back off again for a second to see if the blood moth shows up. Let me get some coffee here, guys. I am really, really enjoying this game. I like it. Let me back off one, because I don't have fast moves. No? It's not coming towards me, unfortunately. Now I can lunge at it. C. A. Enter. Whoops. You lunge. You hit the blood moth. The blood moth bites you. Using your torch. You carry a torch that illuminates your surroundings, but its light makes your presence obvious to enemies. To put your torch away, press T. You won't be able to see quite as far without your torch, and you'll have a harder time spotting hidden things, but you'll be able to sneak around without automatically alerting monsters. Press any key to continue. Oh, you heard it, guys. Let me try backing off by one and see if it follows. Yeah, it did. All right, well, let's just try and kill it then. All right, we got it. We're kind of hurting, but it's not the end of the world. What is this? Shrine of Defense. Yes, let's touch that. Each point of defense skill adds plus 3% to your chance to avoid melee or bow attacks. So they'll have a 72% chance to hit me from now on instead of 75. You feel a rush of power. Do I get a feat out of that, or what's, what's that about? Is it only when you take combat you get feats? Or, oh, it's every fifth one, that's right. Every fifth shrine. That's three shrines. Maybe the first one, and then on the sixth one? Or, or the first one, and then on the fifth one? I don't know. I wonder if we could have doused that standing torch. I didn't notice. Let's try putting our... No, I don't want to miss any traps. What is this? It looks like water. Ice. Shallow water. Let's go through this shallow water. Cool water sloshes around your legs. All right. on the ice. If it's having any effect, I can't determine what that is. It might just be that certain spells interact with it. For instance, if you're standing in water and someone casts a freeze spell, I know it affects you more drastically. Did I put my torch away? Alright, there. My torch is away. Just for a moment. Vulnerable. You notice a trap. A dart hits you. I was standing there. Oh, that's because it threw the dart at me. You spot the kobold that fired it. You become vulnerable. While you're vulnerable, taking any major damage will activate its effect. You'll take 3d6 extra damage, after which you'll no longer be vulnerable. Okay. Let's shoot that bastard. You need a bow. Oh, I thought I had it going. Let's lunge at it. C. A. Enter. You lunge. You hit. Let's do it again. Alright, we killed it. A scroll labeled Grow a loloni shoe. Let's get it. Let's put back on our torch for now. Oh fuck! We blinded that guy. Um, let's let's lunge at the um, spore pod. 
Do I need to know? Am I gonna, is it going to blow up in my face or something? It sounds like it blow up when you hit it or something. A sack full of spores floating through the air. Yep. We don't want to do that. Um, is it chasing me? No. Oh, fuck. I stepped on a trap, though. A high-pitched ringing sound reverberates from above you. Let's... Fuck. Let's try activating one of our devices. Let's do the scroll first. A scroll labeled Grow a Loloni Shu. A. Oh, it's a scroll map. You read the scroll labeled Grow a Loloni Shu Knowledge Village Mine. So we learn what the map is shaped like. That's kind of cool. I don't think we want to fucking deal with this sword guy right now, or this spore guy. But on the other hand, I can't really avoid it. I can't get away from it that I know how. Activate. Oh, roll of bandages. That's kind of neat. It might not be able to hurt me, aside from popping when I hit it. Let's try a roll of bandages. Oh, it stunned me. I was wrong. It blew up, I guess. While stunned, you can walk normally, but any other action might fail, causing you to stagger in a random direction. That's fucking cool, man! Um, so it blew up, it looks like. Uh, we're poisoned, we're stunned, we're bandaged. Uh, the spore pod is at zero health, so it popped. So it's not just when you hit it. When it gets beside you, when it attacks you, it pops. The darkness weller also got hurt by it, though, which is kind of cool. Let's try and get out of... Fuck, how do we get out of this? The poison burns, man. I should have, um... Let's do a lunge on him. Let's get out of the poison. Okay, we're at least out of it. Alright, that shit's back. The effect of the spores wears off. That's cool. And the spores are diminishing as time goes on. Looks like the map revealed um, traps as well. We don't need our um, our exhaustion back right now. Oh, that's not, that's not exhaustion, is it? What is this? Oops. A web. Uh-oh. That might indicate the presence of a spider, of course. I like how the uh, messages at the top have a gray... a gray cast when you're, um... when it's an old message, and white when it's new. That's kind of neat. Giant bat. We can, uh, um, lunge at it, though. Killed it with one hit. Pass me a turn a little to see if we spot anything. At least we don't have to. We probably automatically saw it all when we did the mapping. What is that? Looks like there's some equipment up here. There's a chromatic orb and um, oh, a treasure chest. Interesting. Let's clear the rubble a little bit. Oh, that gave us exhaustion. Whoa. That took us down to 1%. Maybe we just couldn't see it before. Let's get this. What do we know about the treasure chest? Anything? No, it's just a treasure chest. Um, you think we bump into it to open it? Press G to open it. You gotta stand in a square. All right, we found a scroll labeled Ta Amokra. Um, we have a choice now. We could rest. Maybe we should. Our exhaustion is terrible. Our health is... Let's just walk, walk back up a little bit first. So we're closer to an enemy. If and when the time comes to... Um... Right, let's go to here. Let's rest. Yep. I didn't want to do that too early because we did, of course, have the... Um have the spell still to cast. But it's done. Let's turn on our torch for now. No, we don't... Yeah, so let's leave it out. We already know we found all the traps, right? Allegedly. Let's go deal with the uh, shrines over here. Oh, it's a doorway. I thought it was a shrine.
So the area is lit. Let me move my cursor out of the way here. No, I guess not. Well, let me move it off the off the game entirely. Web. There is a very good chance there's a spider in here somewhere, but there could also be like a shrine or something. I don't know. Unless it's a set number of shrines, we've already found it. The place seems quiet to me. Maybe we're ready to go down. Maybe we rested just in the nick of time. What the hell? Where is it? Uh, we don't. We don't have any reason to face it. Let's find out what it is. An insect with powerful jaws built low to the ground. It can burrow through the ground faster than a man can walk. That's exquisitely terrifying. Um, let's get out of here. It's getting closer. If it catches up, I'll lunge at it. It burrowed into the ground. There it is. Damn it. All right, let's try our spell. Zed. Magic hammer. Which direction? North. Casting without mana. Spells can be cast even when you're out of mana. Doing this is exhausting. Your exhaustion will increase by 5% for every missing point of mana. That's cool, eh? Press any key to continue. We heard it bad. Let's just go ahead and do that again. Yes. Let's make sure it's dead. How's our exhaustion already back down to 5%? Oh! Earlier when I was clearing rubble... <laughs> my god, how dumb am I? When I was clearing the rubble, I was saying, hey, isn't it weird? We cleared the rubble and our exhaustion meter goes up. Because I was interpreting that as, like, I was missing the rest of the bar and I only had 5% left. I think it's the opposite. We are 5% exhausted, is what that's saying. Okay. That makes more sense. Uh, let's try and trick the game by trying to rest again, but I think it'll tell us we can't. You find it impossible to rest again on this dungeon level. Impossible, man, I tell you. Let's go downstairs. Let's turn on our torch first. Well, let's try. Let's try to turn on our torch. There we go. Let's go down the stairs. Okay. Oh, we're right next to a standing torch. Um, Tanya is playing a roguelike again in the other room on the Xbox. I, I, rem I remembered what it was called. She's playing Darkest Dungeon. It's a game I quite like. I'd like to play it on this channel sooner or later, but it's not free. It's a commercial game, so... But Darkest Dungeons 2 is just coming out um, soon, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll fire that up on the uh, channel when I'm done the State of Decay 2 playthrough. I'll, I have it on both the PC and on the Xbox, but maybe I'll play it on the Xbox. Let's put our torch back on.